Ready to turn your photos into watercolor wonders? Join me in this easy to follow stable diffusion tutorial and unleash your artistic potential. Let's get creative. I am using Stable Diffusion Automatic 1111 and for the checkpoint model, I am utilizing the Juggernaut XL version 6. Go to the image to image tab and upload the photo you want to transform into a watercolor painting. I am adding negative words like photo and photographic to enhance the painting-like appearance. For the prompt, you can use the interrogate clip button to obtain a sample prompt. Then, keep only the beginning part that describes the subject and delete the section about style. Add these words to describe the watercolor painting effect. Amazing, vivid watercolor painting. Fluid washes of color blend seamlessly. Watercolor paper texture. For the sampling method, I use DPM plus plus 3M SDE by Keras with 40 sampling steps. For the aspect ratio, I select 16.9 as that matches my image's dimensions, which are 1200 pixels in width. The CFG scale is set to three. I begin with a denoise strength of 0 0.65. When conducting tests, I prefer to start with a fixed seed to observe how the prompt alters the result. Once ready, I hit generate, and in a few seconds, I have the watercolor painting. It looks quite good with uh, those drips and a nice color blend. I then send the result uh, to extra tabs, choose two, Emer resizing, and for upscaling, I use my favorite method, 8x NMKD superscale. Uh, clicking on the generate button produces the upscaled version in under seven seconds. The result looks pretty good. Now let's try another example and then I will show you the problems I encountered with some of the photos. I am uploading a mountain landscape photo and then I use the interrogate button. I delete the last part of the generated prompt and similar to the previous example, the add the watercolor effect details. Uh, after that I hit generate. The results look okay. Now let me show you where I run into some problems. I am uploading a portrait photo of a girl, and then as usual, I use the interrogate clip feature. It incorrectly identifies a red jacket, which doesn't actually exist in the photo. This illustrates that the method isn't perfect. However, ChatGPT can be used to get a detailed description. Now, using the same settings, the result still appears photorealistic, which is unexpected. To address this, I try increasing the, the denoise strength to 0.7. This change starts to introduce some watercolor effects on the edges, so I decide to also test a setting of 0.75. To maintain a look closer to the original photo, I use the control net. I enable Canny, select Pixel Perfect, and for the model, I choose Koya Control Light XL. I try again with a denoise strength of 0.65, which previously produced a photorealistic result. Surprisingly, it now looks like a watercolor painting even at that value. With the control net, you can use higher denoise strength values like 0.85, which looks pretty nice. You can even go up to one for denoise strength. As you can see, the result becomes more distinct. For portraits, it's challenging to retain the exact facial features, but for other subjects like objects, you can achieve nice watercolor results. This bunny also gave me some problems. I set the denoise strength to 0.65 and disabled the control net. After adjusting the prompt, the result was as realistic as it was with the girl's photo, so I thought increasing the denoise strength to 0.75 would introduce the watercolor effect, just as it had with the girl. However, this didn't happen. The rabbit image seemed even more resistant to change. It was only after setting a really high value, like 0.9, that it started to transform into a watercolor painting. 
I didn't like that this change altered the pose of the rabbit, so I reactivated the control net. With the control net active, the result looked okay. A nice watercolor painting. Now, for the next subject, I will use a portrait of a dog. Um, I am simply adding a dog to the prompt along with the watercolor text. I suggest playing with the denoise strength and uh, experimenting with both enabling and disabling the control net to see which yields the best result. The control net is more restrictive, takes longer to generate, and sometimes limits the creativity of the generation. Therefore, I usually start without the control net, adjusting the denoise strength as needed. If that doesn't work, I enable the control net. For the final image, I will use a photo of a vase with red roses. Uh, I obtain a good starting point with the interrogate clip feature, um, then add the watercolor text. I begin the process with a denoise strength of 0.65 without the control net to see how this particular image responds. However, it seems that at this level of denoise strength, the watercolor style isn't prominent enough. I increase the denoise strength to 0.75, but still, the watercolor effect isn't as powerful as I'd like. Even at 0.85, it doesn't look quite right, so I am forced to use the control net again, which works great. I try different seeds until I achieve the perfect image and upscale them when ready. This method can be used to create styles other than watercolor, including 3D and oil paintings, among others. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. Please subscribe to the Pixaroma channel and like the video for more stable diffusion tutorials. Thank you and have a great day.